Alright, am I crazy or is Yui the best servant that came out for this whole Samurai Remnant collaboration that we have over on the JP version right now? Because I don't think I'm that crazy in at least saying that she seems to be a hidden 5 star in a 4 star's body. Because she is a 4 star limited caster that almost seems like what people want Helena to be. Helena being this very accessible, you know, general pool 4 star support caster that can also do some damage. Yui seems as though her kit is already finished, it's done, because go figure she's releasing in current year. They're probably going to have a more complete kit that doesn't really need all that many buffs. And while I do really like what they're doing with Raikou, I think Raikou is very interesting that, yeah, no, does she can farm any real AoE servant worth their salt is going to be able to farm in current year. That's kind of a prerequisite for being an AoE unit, I almost feel like. That's kind of the bare minimum they got to be able to do. And her earth damage is really insane, and her crits are really fun to do. But Yui just seems as though she's going to, like age very well for a long long time because even though i look at her kit and maybe there might be one or two things that i would have changed around or swapped or maybe wish they added i think that would have made her a little bit too broken to be fair the things that i want them to give her as we kind of go through her stats and skills i'll break those down and what i think they should have added but god forbid they start to buff this unit in the future they do a rerun in a year they buff yui and then they drop some other samurai remnant character that's ridiculous right that is absolutely ludicrous like let's just not even get into that but instead, let's get into what this servant actually does, because if you don't know, I'm going to break down the stats and skills in this video. But if you would, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps out the channel, and it supports your boy doing that daily FGO content. But let's start getting into this so you guys can understand where I am coming from with this servant and why I like her so much. First and foremost, she's rocking the triple arts deck, which is going to be very nice as a support because you put her with some buster guys, you know, you got Merlin as your other support. He's going to appreciate having those extra arts cards floating around. Your buster guys are going to appreciate having extra arts cards for those easier arts chains. That's always just nice when a support has that. But even if you're going to bring her, say, a plug suit for the Oberon you don't have and maybe some buster setups with Koya and Skaya. She'll still be very nice for that and at least providing extra arts cards, but as far as the hits are concerned, none of them are particularly crazy. It's not like she's got, whoa, 0.78% NP gain over here with four hit arts cards. It's pretty fine. It's very tame. Nothing here is very crazy. The star gen's okay. The arts hits are going to be passable enough. The extra attack, we love that they gave it the five hits, but even her passives are pretty just all right, you know, giving herself 7% of an arts buff to kind of make her NP gain a little bit easier, and then giving herself a little bit of a debuff success rate as well. Now, I do want to say before we actually start getting into the skills that she has, I do understand that Yui doesn't necessarily have to just be dedicated to being a support. She could also be a solo servant. I see a lot of potential in her being able to do something along those lines because of just how well her kit is made. But I do think the majority of people are probably going to use her as a pseudo support, kind of like a plug suit if you don't have uh, the extra or last piece of a farming comp or you just need that extra little bit of damage she's going to be able to provide for you. I think that's what she's mostly going to be used as. So that's how I'm going to be approaching her skills and evaluating her. But obviously, I don't want to discount, you know, anybody that wants to use her as, say, a solo servant because her kit does actually work out rather well for that. Now, her first skill over here is just phenomenal. This is something I love to see her have as a support or a solo servant in general because it's giving her a five turn guts that's on a six turn cooldown, essentially meaning that Yui is always going to have an extra life. So if she's her support, she's in less danger of getting blown up by the enemy. If she's a solo servant, she's basically got an extra life that's always online. That's always also giving her a thousand HP every single turn for five turns and giving her one instance of debuff immunity for three turns. And again, this is very strong because it means that she's always recovering HP, which is very nice. It means she's kind of self-sufficient in that way. 
she's giving herself her own survivability and she's giving herself her own sustainability as well and isn't it just annoying when your castoria your merlin your waiver gets np sealed or skill sealed in the middle of a fight not only does it ruin your cooldowns but maybe you were ready to go smack the boss but now oh no you don't have any debuff removal or you got np sealed on your castoria so now she can't do her job and remove all the debuffs on your party well at least for yui she's going to be able to neg one of those debuffs coming her way and i think that is absolutely phenomenal it means that she is pretty much always going to be online and very self-sufficient which i absolutely love moving into her second skill this is just a very beautifully crafted skill this is going to be good in any party the first skill keeps her safe it makes sure that she is going to be fine the second skill phenomenal it's giving everybody 20 percent battery 30 percent np damage 15 stars a turn and reduces all enemies attack by 20% for three turns. Those are all three turn buffs on a seven turn cooldown. These are things that every single party is going to want. The only ones that maybe don't like it as much is if you're using someone like Chi Shi Huang or you're going to be using someone like Super Orion. These guys that really focus on doing big crit damage and don't really have offensive NPs. But even then, you're still giving them extra battery to get to those strong NPs. You're still making the enemy weaker by lowering their attack and you're still giving them stars they're just missing out of the np damage which admittedly is a very big part of this skill 30 percent that is the same buff that tamamo gives to everybody and it's the same reason that tamamo still sees some use even in farming comps right even though she's really a cq oriented uh, support type servant she still sees a lot of play because the big arts buff and a big NP damage buff goes a long way, especially as just a plug suit you can bring in for a node that might be a little bit too big. And Yui's also got that. Now, her arts buff is not as big as, say, Tamamu's, but she does give immediate battery, which is commonly going to be the biggest complaint that people have about Tamamo. So that is kind of a dub for Yui. And I'm not saying that she replaces Tamamo. Let's not get into that discussion right here. But she is very, very good. And I love how this second skill is built because it's helping out your other supports get to their very strong NPs, whether it's a Merlin for a Buster comp, whether it's a Scotty or a Ruler Scotty, who Scotty, after getting her buff, her NP is a lot stronger. So if you can get to it, you can actually start to reap some of those benefits and so not only helping your DPS and herself get to her own NP, which is very strong, but helping your other supports is something I absolutely love. Then finally, there's her third skill. This seems to be the biggest point of contention for some people because she's able to give an ally a 30% arts buff and a 30% crit damage buff, both for three turns, and then she gives herself 30% battery. So effectively, she has her own 50% battery, helping her get to her own NP so she can support the party a lot better. The crit damage, again, like everything on the second skill, very universal. Every party is going to want some crit damage. It's just very good to have crits in general. The arts buff, you could argue every single party could use this because if you're a buster servant, getting an arts card buff does mean your refund is going to be a little bit better. Same thing for the quick servants, but clearly this is probably tailored towards your arts units who are also going to get the benefit of not only the arts cards themselves, but also the arts buff to their NP. So their damage is getting you know raised even more because not only do they have the NP damage buff, but they're also getting the arts card buff over here. But I still think it's good in the same way that Oberon can be applied to pretty much any party. I almost see her as the baby version of that because sure, Oberon has a buster buff, but how often do you see people say, oh, Oberon is specifically a buster support unit? You know, it's why I don't look at Yui as specifically an arts unit because her buffs are so generally applicable, like say someone like Oberon, who just has buffs that everybody really wants, that the card buff is just a little bit of extra incentive to use them in say a buster party for say Oberon or an arts party for say Yui, but you could still get the benefits of using them in other parties, especially for Yui, who is a four star, and you might want to use her as, say, an Asclepius replacement or a Paracelsus replacement, even. Even though she doesn't give the NP gain, if the NP gain is not a problem, you know, you're already refunding well enough, then you're getting extra damage. You're getting a better arts buff and more NP damage. And so I think she could really help out in some of those parties as well. She's almost kind of like a mix of those two, if you think about Paracelsus and Asclepius, because Asclepius gives you the battery and the NP gain, 
Paracelsus gives you really big NP gain and a small arts buff, but no battery. So I kind of see her as the hodgepodge mix of a lot of the best of all the free to play servants and all their different support type buffs, which is why I think she's so good. And then you move over to her NP, and this is really where she starts to show her value as a universal servant, because what you're seeing right here is that depending on the card buff that your allies have, she will give you a corresponding buff. So if you have a quick buff, she's going to give you a 20 to 30 percent attack buff. If you have an arts buff, which she already provides, you're going to be getting a 30 to 50 percent crit damage buff. If you have a buster buff, she's going to give you 20 to 30 percent NP damage. And then everybody, regardless of buffs, is going to get a three to seven K heal, which again, is kind of playing on that Tamamo thing that I was kind of talking about earlier, where she seems to have little bits and pieces from people like Tamamo and Paracelsus and Asclepius, just the best hits of a lot of these different servants kind of smashed into her, even Oberon to a certain extent, where she gives one guy that 50% NP damage. And I say one guy because it's probably going to be your main DPS with the buster buff. But hey, if you have someone that gives an AoE buster buff to the whole party, everybody's getting NP damage. And she just looks like she's going to be very strong. And I know I think that she looks, but I've also been playing with her a lot because I really like Dewey from Samurai Remnant. So I just started playing around with her a lot as soon as I could get my grubby little mitts on her. And she just feels really nice in some of these parties. Now, obviously, if you have double Castoria, is she going to replace one of your Castorias? Probably not. But what I think she can be very nice for is, say, someone like me who has double Castoria but no Oberon. So now I kind of have a stronger plug suit option than bringing in Waver because, you know, Waver gives you the 50%, but it's really just the attack buff. The crit buff or the defense buff for, say, farming purposes doesn't really do anything. Now, I'm not getting a full 50%, but in arts teams, you know, I don't really need that full 50%. I might just need the 20% because I'm looping so well. The NP damage buff and the extra arts buff are also going to be very nice on top of that and making sure that my guys are going to stay topped off and doing even more damage. I see her being very valuable there. If there is a way to start with her NP at 100% in your quick and buster setup, say you have a kaleidoscope and you have her a pen skill done for the 20% battery, that is going to show a lot of value there as well because you can have her NP go in front of your main damage dealer and they'll either get the attack buff or the NP damage buff depending on what their card type is or ideally you might get both if you have say an Okita Alter type character who has a quick and buster buff, they'll get both of these buff types and they will really benefit from somebody like Yui over here. Now, it's not just really good in farming setups. I just got to kind of sell her as a good person in farming setups for that reason, because again, farming is 90 to 95% of the game. And if you're not good in there, then a lot of people aren't going to give you a second look. But she can be very good in there. It's just, I think they nerfed her a little bit because the easiest way to get her to 100% NP is in an art setup because Castoria gives everybody 60% with double charisma. You know, you could have one Yui in your starting party, have one Castoria dump all the buffs, plug suit her out, have the other Castoria fire her buffs. Yui's going to give herself 30%. She only needs to find 10%, which can easily be found from just unlocking her a pen skill, having a starting charge CE or just doing an arch chain over the course of doing your farming, but they nerfed that a little bit because they only gave her crit damage, which can still be very good if you're relying on face cards. It can make that a little bit more consistent, but I think they were very specific and not giving the attack buff or the NP damage buff to Yui for the arts buffs, because that might have been a little bit too good and too focused into being an arts dedicated servant where they clearly want her to be good in really any party. In which case, I think your servants that have the Omni card buffs, I think they're going to benefit a lot from a character like this. You know, Iori has a triple card buff. He's going to love being paired with Yui because he's going to get all the free buffs. Your Muramasas are going to love this. Your Emiya units are all just going to love this. And your Chloe's are going to love this. Anybody that has the Omni card buff is going to be a huge fan. Chiron even, he's going to really love this because it just gives him a whole bunch of extra power for having extra card buffs. And now when you're building teams, you might sometimes consider Yui because you might look at one of your servants and you're like, huh, Bradamante over here has an arts and a quick buff. So she's actually going to get crit damage and attack. It might be kind of valuable to just sneak Yui on this team to let her reap some of these benefits. You know, 
that might be something worth considering in some of these setups going forward. Now, is she going to change the game? No, I don't think she's going to be super game changer or anything like that. I think in the same vein that the Summer Chloe changed a lot of the ways that we could use setups now. And you could, I mean, the funniest thing is still going to be a Rosh farming. That is by far going to be the funniest thing that came out of that. But in the same way that it changed the way that you could do some of your team builds, I think Yui is going to be very similar in that. That Yui is going to provide a lot of extra utility, especially goes without saying, in CQ content, boss fights, weird fights that we have on the bleached earth, you know, over for ordeal call, all those weird fights over there, advanced quests. She's going to be very nice for that and just all the nice free buffs that she's generally applying to everybody. Tower events, she'll be a godsend because... She's just an extra support that you have and makes those events a whole lot easier and less convoluted. But then for farming, I think it'll be very interesting that obviously if you have double Castoria, double Koyanskaya, double Scotty plus Oberon, you're probably just going to keep doing that. But if you don't have Oberon, because, you know, he doesn't come around all that often and he is a limited servant. If you don't have him, she might be a really solid option. And again, if you have K-Scope, like I just pulled my own K-Scope over on JP, that if I get Yui, I'm probably going to unlock her a pen skill and use her a lot more in these setups because instead of plugging in Waver, I think I'll start plugging in Yui. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Am I an insane madman? Is this the worst take I've ever had? Or do you think I'm kind of cooking? Because... I think saying that Yui is better than Ushi Gozen over there might be a little insane. Some people might want to crucify me for that one, but I am considering it. I'm not fully sold on it, but I do really like Yui. I do like a lot of what she is doing, and I would love to get your guys' feedback in the comments down below. So let me know your thoughts. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe as always, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, late guys.